Today we're gonna take a regular rotisserie chicken and turn it into something amazing. Pot pie with a twist. So the dish we're going to make today is chicken pot pie with a little local twist and we're going to add a dash of curry in it. I literally wrote it in the book, a dash of curry. And we're going to start with shredding our, our little friend over here with the chicken. The good part about this recipe is that we don't waste any part of it, including the bones, because we're going to take the bones and make chicken stock that is then going to be used in the pot pie. So we're gonna break down our little friend here. And don't throw away this stuff from the bottom of your tree either. All of that makes for a great stock. So it's it's going to be used. Don't don't throw away all the fat from the bottom or any anything from the chicken for that matter. Just gonna shred our friend so we went yesterday and got this rotisserie chicken from Massey stores so it's like good rotisserie chicken to start with so flavor wise i'm not gonna have to work too hard i mean like the great part about pot pie i feel is that so like the components of your pot pie i freeze it you could freeze like the filling and the dough that goes on the top and everything and just whenever you feel like having a pot pie whip it out the freezer in the morning and you have everything thawed by afternoon you know make yourself a pot pie for dinner and you're good to go we finished shredding our chicken and we have all of our nice shredded chicken here now you don't need to use all of it that is quite a lot um you can use some chicken salad you know a little soup here and there if you want to make ramen from the pack and you want it to just have a little extra oomph you know all those things um so we're gonna use some of that and then we're gonna start on the stock over here with our skin and bones and the fat that i told you not to throw away it's going to come in real handy that's like the best flavor you're gonna get so let's start on the stock Onions, carrots, people do stock all kinds of ways but I don't salt stock, um, I don't think you're supposed to because you, it's just flavor, you add your salt to taste in the dish that you use the stock on and chicken stock in your freezer is the best thing that you could possibly have it's like soup on the fly is stick it out the freezer put it in the microwave so you have instant almost instant soup when you when you think about it if you make enough chicken stock and this is gonna make more than what we need for the recipe so right we have a little stick here time to go All the chicken fats. All the chicken fats. All these guys. Oh, and it smells so good already. Like, so, so good. So, think of like anything that has liquid being added to it. Any meal that you make that has any kind of liquid. Like, you, you feel like, okay, you could put coconut milk in it, which is a very Caribbean thing. But you could also put chicken stock in almost anything. Well, unless you're vegetarian, then don't do that. <laughs> then you, I mean, you could do mushroom stock. Mushroom stock is extremely flavorful. It's the same, on the same level, so. Right. Now you don't want, you don't want to boil. When it comes up to the boil, you drop it to a low heat and you let it simmer. 
boiling things tends to ruin flavor and simmering things tends to let them come out so not a rolling boil not a, a violent boil but a very very light simmer is what you're looking for our stock is simmering away simmering not boiling and i did skim a little bit of fat off of the top and we're gonna start on pastry so this is one of those pastry doughs that i use for everything pie dough galettes pot pies tarts doesn't matter it, it works for so many different things it's one of those things i recommend you definitely have a batch or two in your freezer but we're gonna start super simple so it's some flour now the recipe is gonna be in the link so right. and then a pinch of salt so i have a cup of butter and it was cubed previously and then put in the freezer because you want the butter as cold as possible because your fingers are gonna melt it a little bit and you want to try to avoid that the texture you're looking for is like wet sand when you're done it it, it feels like wet sand well damp sand not wet sand basically this is the consistency you're looking for you want no big solid chunks of butter left if it's squished in with a little flour no problem but no whole chunks of butter and we're gonna take very very cold water or if you don't trust yourself ice water and you're using as little as you possibly can and combining it as soon as it's combined you're not trying to knead it you're just trying to make sure you kind of squish it together right Our pastry dough is in the fridge, chilling, and the stock is, I would say, nearly done. And we're gonna start on the filling for our pot pies. And we're gonna actually start with a little bit of curry. Let's see, let's see how that goes. Only using a little bit. And just to make sure that we get the flavor. Only a dash, because that stuff is Badawi's special mix so it, it ain't um it ain't mild what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn the curry as you're supposed to and then on top of it we're gonna make the roux and add in the stock and then make the entire mixture on top of that whole curry mixture that I'm starting with almost to the point to drop the flour now I have one third cup of butter and you're gonna use one third cup of flour so the base for every roux is equal parts butter and flour and then you add the liquid in so just rule of thumb if you know okay two tablespoons that's two tablespoons and you keep it keep with your ratio now at this point you want to cook the flour just for maybe a minute or a minute and a half just so that that starchy taste that you usually get from flour is no longer there right i need more now i'm making a mess This is just to make sure I have no lumps at the bottom. And at this point, I'm gonna dump in my veg. Just gonna add this in so it could cook. 
we're gonna add all of our spices and my, my weakness I have for fine time always it's absolute weakness we have some garlic a lot of garlic <laughs> a little bit of jira because I feel like nothing with potatoes and chicken should not have jira in it like if you have potato and chicken in something it should have jira <laughs> Yeah, we have some umami seasoning or MSG and I mean David Chang would be so proud of me but ha, there goes and if you feel Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger and David Chang would be very proud of me our potatoes have been boiling in our little pot pie base for about 10 minutes but it depends on the size you cut your potatoes so you get Take a fork, poke it, make sure it's tender enough and you should be ready. And at this point, I'm going to add some of our chicken that we did. So at this point, this is ready. I just want to taste the salt, add a little extra salt if we need it. And then get ready with the ramekins on this side and pastry dough. A little sprinkle as well. Our mixture is ready. Our oven is preheating, and we have four ramekins here. Now this makes more than four, but we're just gonna do four today. And we could always put this stuff in the fridge or the freezer and do it tomorrow, the after, next month if you want the freezer. And all I'm gonna do is. Roll off my dough, quarter inch thickness, which is, I think, standard. And um, cut some circles to fit the top of these. Now you can get fancy and you know cut a little leaf or a little whatever and you know decorate the top of your your, your pot pie make it liver. Oh, i'm not i'm not seeing anybody's chopped liver i'm i all i'm saying is that i left my stuff at home but we will we'll make a little leaf here and there i'm gonna get a nice ladle full of this stuff in there Ooh, i don't know if it's just me or like the curry gave it a really nice like color so we're gonna just put these guys around and i'm gonna just kind of secure them to the ends now i like to have the pastry overlap just a little bit because the the, the inside kind of bubbles when it's in the oven put a nice little x you need the x because you need the heat to escape Because if you don't, then it's gonna like crack the pastry right open and it's gonna be a hot mess everywhere. I have the oven heated up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 205 Celsius is the conversion. And I'm just gonna pop them in just until the crust gives you a nice golden brown and it's cooked and you pull them out and you eat. So we're gonna go. Come here, come here lovelies. So as you can see, our lovely little pot pies are out and I get to taste one now. And they smell so watery. Out. 
position away to the cool. I burn in the mouth. Great. If like buttery pie crust and chicken soup had a baby, this would be the baby. Okay. It's like crunchy, awesome crust that I feel like I could eat on its own. And then this deep, flavorful filling that's just rich and a little bit spicy because it's me and I put spice in everything. <laughs> but as all around really good, you really, really should try this recipe and you definitely need to go to Massey stores, pick up a rotisserie chicken and make this and send me a picture, please. Let me know if it comes out good. A very special thank you to Massey stores for sponsoring this episode and definitely go to Massey stores to the ready to go section, pick up your rotisserie chicken and try some pot pie or add some chicken to your, your ramen or your mac and cheese or your sandwiches or whatever and do not waste the bones make some stock with the bones so let me know if you will make it and see you next time